What is going on everyone? It's Kelly here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, today's video is going to be strictly a how-to video. I bought some stone crab traps and I'm super excited to try around the Stuart Jupiter area for stone crab. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to put it together. I'm going to try to make it as simple and easy to learn as possible. Um, but here we go. So the bottom of the trap, this is going to be the frame, this side of the cage with these little nubs sticking out and these ridges here. That's for when you pour the concrete. So that's kind of how you can tell like if the trap's like right side up when you're building it. These should just slide in pretty easily, just like so. Next you're going to take another side of the trap, um, not the same side, obviously you want your same sides of the trap to look alike. So the pieces with the three nubs on top mirror each other. Now this one I put them together, I kind of like flip it over. That way when I slide it in, I'm sliding it in and not like awkwardly doing it. Now the instructions when you do buy these traps ask for just like a like a hammer to hammer in the sides, but I find that they slide in pretty easily. Um, if you're having trouble sliding in the, the sides to build the trap, they say just use a little bit of oil. It might be some Pam spray or just something to lube it up, that way you can get it in easier. All right, last trap. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it back over. So this is right side up. And put the last wall in. And again, you want to make sure this side of the trap is on the inside. Slide it right in, just like that. Perfect. So now I'm not going to lie, when you first open the box to your five traps, it's a little intimidating because every single little piece is individualized. But once you put the first trap together, you'll put together the pieces and it's super easy to put together. As for the lid, the lid fits on there just like perfectly. It's nice and flush. You're going to get a little baggie full of these plastic pieces. Now two pieces come in this bag. Sorry, the wind just picked up. You're going to have these little clamps and then these little, I don't know what to call them, the little things that you use to close the trap with. 
on the back side of your lid, you're gonna make sure that these two holes face upward. And you're gonna clamp it on. That bird is so loud. It's a cardinal. It's a cardinal. Where is he? He's somewhere in there. No, it's a mockingbird. I see him right there. Now he stops singing when I get the camera on him. He's camera shy. So just like a paper clip or even a chip bag clip. You just open it up and slide it right on. You're gonna use both pieces. Make sure those two bigger holes are facing up. And slide that on. All right, so now same thing, now you're gonna attach it to the cage. So I just use like my left thumbnail to prop it open and slip it on. And I don't put it on all the way because I wanna put this one on as well. <clears throat> Same thing, pop it open and slip it right on there. All right, and before putting the screws in, I like to just make sure the top is nice and flush Make sure you can open it and shut it. All right, next step, you're gonna take four screws. Okay. Screw these little plastic pieces in place. Now the plastic is super soft and when you go to drill, you'll notice that it does heat up the plastic a little bit. So just kind of be careful and you know, take your time. Lock it that way. The lid ain't coming off. 
Step two, after you're done building all five of your traps, they do not come with bottoms. And that is because you want to lay concrete on the bottom of these traps, that way they don't float away. Um, depending on where you put your stone crab traps, there could be a lot of current. That's why they make the traps heavier than lighter. Because if they're too light, then the current's going to take your trap away. So, we're going to get to the concrete pouring now. I'm going to set it all up and then show you guys how to do that. All right, you guys, so I have all the traps laid out here. I put cardboard under them. Um, I don't really know exactly what else to use, but we're using cardboard. Now we're gonna go ahead and get to the messy part. Hopefully it's not too messy, but we're gonna mix the concrete. So I just got literally, I think a $6 bag of concrete from Lowe's. Got a little shovel here. some water. <laughs> this is only my second time mixing concrete. I'm just gonna do it, add some water, stir it up. It might be easier to use a bigger shovel, I don't know. I just got a little one here, so I'm working with what I got. A little more water. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Blue Gabe pour the concrete for me, just cause it's a little heavy. But we're gonna fill the concrete about halfway where it needs to be. It's probably good. Flatten it out with a shovel. Redneck, what are you doing? All right, so you wanna make sure you flatten it out nice and flat. And then we cut these chicken wire grates the same size as the bottom of our trap. And we're gonna set that into the concrete and then top it off with another small layer of concrete. That way it just gives it kind of a, more of a structural, stronger base. You don't have to do this, but this is just something that we're doing. Really good. Perfect. Then, feel free to get your hands dirty, or you can use a small shovel and flatten that baby out. Make you, sure that wire is covered completely. You gotta make sure you get it up underneath that lip. Cause that lip's the only thing it's got holding it in there. If you've ever walked in beach sand or around the lake bank that's white sandy and you pat your feet and the water comes to the surface, that's what you want to do here. And get all the air bubbles out. All right, you guys, I'm gonna do the next one. Now that there's less concrete in the bucket, but we're, we, gotta mix more now. we do have to mix more concrete now. So I bought two 50 pound bags of concrete in a roll of that chicken wire. And what we did is just measured the bottom of the trap and cut out a square of chicken wire. Use that to cut out four more. Dust going on our boats. Oh no. <laughs> that first time we dumped the whole bag in there and then we started adding water, which created a lot of dry down at the bottom, like if you're baking a cake. This time I put the water on the bottom. Good idea. Oh, I don't my camera does. I'm gonna use the zoom feature. So right now I'm gonna show you the consistency that you would want your concrete before you pour it into the traps. A little more water. Oh, 
So he's just kink the hose in one hand and stern with the other. You want it like a slushy, or as Kelly Young would say, a frozen Coke. <laughs> slushy. You so, do not want to eat that slushy. This has been a real serious video thus far. Y'all leave a comment below. Are they Slurpees or frozen Cokes? You know those things you get at the 7-Eleven? The Icy's? No. They're Is it a Slurpee icy, or a frozen Coke? <laughs> You know that machine that says icy on it and you get like a red and blue cup? Well, growing up, me, my dad, and my brother would go get frozen Cokes. So that's what I call them. You get the Coca-Cola slushy, AKA icy, but I call them frozen Cokes just because I grew up calling them frozen Cokes. All right. You pouring it or am I pouring it? I'm gonna pour it. Oh, she's gonna pour it. <laughs> I'm gonna do that much. I'm gonna use the shovel. And smear it around. So the first pour you're gonna meet right up to these little nipples here. Make sure nice and flat. Then you're gonna add your little sheet of wire. And you're gonna press that in. Like so. This is fun. I like this stuff. And then pour your second layer of concrete over that. make this one a little lighter. Use your hands, it's way easier. <laughs> All right. It is easier to use your hands. All right, I think that, I'm gonna make, well, some of them gonna be too heavy, but, and again, I don't want this bottom to fall out. I'll add a little more. Pouring and using your hands is easiest. Give it a little pat. You know what this reminds me of? Those primitive YouTube videos where you watch those people make huge forts and underwater pools with mud and clay. Why don't you and the kids start doing that back in the creek and I'll video it. You know how hard that is? Well, <laughs> I'll give you a hundred dollars a day. hundred dollars a day? Yeah. All right. Do you think I, I really need to fill it up to that lip? If not, we're not going to have enough concrete to do all of them. I got two bags. Um, We've used a whole bag on two. We got Five traps. I just want to try to make one lighter, you know? I'm gonna try to, you know, like there's a little bit of space. I just want to make one a little lighter, but. Take your hands and smush. There you go. Make a frame. That's a good idea. Yeah, you want to make sure those corners are nice and tucked in. Corners are key. I'm gonna need a pedicure after, I mean a manicure after this. She'll be like, what you got in your nail? I say concrete. <laughs> Don't you have a boyfriend? All right. I like it, I like it. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands before this dries. <laughs> All right guys, I gotta do something right now so we know whose trap is whose.
That away, we know whose catch is most. Oh, okay. That depends on the spot. Whoever lays them in the good spot. Look at that perfect G. You might want to put a Kelly in that one. A Kelly in a that Kelly. one. A Kelly. Okay, I was gonna say K, and I went with Kelly. Yeah. Wait, 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 no, we gotta wait for it to dry a little more. All right, let's pour this one. Oh, that one is wet. Yeah. All right, you guys, the concrete is set in all of our traps. And I thought it was gonna take like one to two days to dry, but the concrete I bought says it sets hard in 20 to 40 minutes. So I'm gonna come back out here in about an hour, gonna check on them, and then I'm gonna attach the ropes and the buoys. Um, I might spray paint my buoys. I'll show them to you guys real quick. So these are the buoys that come with your kit. They are completely white. However, there is a lot of issues with people tapping into traps, stealing traps. So I'm gonna spray paint the buoys like a more neutral color uh, to kind of blend in a little bit. And I believe you have to put um, an R on the trap and then your information as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and research that while these set and dry and I'll be back out to spray paint these buoys. So this is just leftover spray paint from that bridge I camouflaged. I have a green and a brown. Gabe went ahead and set me up this beautiful spray painting station. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray paint them. I kinda like this here, it's like nautical looking. Like could be a front yard decoration. You see all that paint's eating into it? Yeah. Why is that? That bad chemicals, just like that sunscreen in the boat I showed you. It's on my fingers. I think it looks best like that. Just like that, yeah. And then I'll probably take like a Sharpie marker and dig an R into there. Um, <coughs> don't breathe in the paint. All right, you guys, the sun is going down, but tomorrow we're gonna go out on the water and season these traps. So we're gonna go ahead and set them out in the water and just let them ripen in the water. Get some algae on it. That way they don't smell so much like cement and more natural to any of the crabs that would like to go into the trap. But so, that being said, I'll see you guys tomorrow out on the water. All right, you guys, it's a little bit windy out here, but we're finally out here with our traps. We have some old bait that we dug out of the, <laughs> our, our uh, freezers here that needs to be used, and it's perfect to be used for stone crab traps. I also picked up some cut up pig's feet as well, just in case we didn't have enough bait. Stick that in there. windy out here. Normally I would take a zip tie and zip tie it shut that way it kind of adds a little bit of extra security to your traps but we forgot the zip ties so that's all right. We went ahead and tied our rope to the corner of our trap here. Made two little knots and put the weight about halfway through the rope. And we have our buoy with an R on it for recreational. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw it in. Oh. Trap number one in the water. So in trap number two, we have some special bait here. We have the leftover carcass of the stingray that Blue Gabe did a catch, clean, and cook with. So nothing is going to waste. It is going in the trap for stone crabs. And then on Blue Gabe's channel, we went ahead and ate the wings, which was surprisingly tasty. So he's being used to catch some more food, AKA stone crabs. I'm curious 
curious to see what's going to be in that trap because of that stingray. In trap number three, we have Barracuda and Bonita in this one. They're a little wee bit heavy. I'm going to wait till they pass the stop a little more. Oh man. So the one thing I can say, if you guys set out crab traps, wear something that you're not afraid to get smelly and dirty. This is our last trap. We filmed the fourth one as well, but it's just, it was so windy over there. I just went ahead and just threw it in the water. Trap number five, we got some blue, or uh, not blue cats, sail catfish. We got, what is this, a ladyfish, and some pig's feet in this one. We got some very nutritious traps out here. All right, ready? Oh, this one's heavy. Thanks. There we go. Whoa. That boat was just hauling butt. But right now I'm wrapping up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this how-to video on stone crab traps. Right now we're gonna go ahead and fish and film a video for Blue Gabe. Then we gotta pick the kids up, but we got a few hours, so why not try and fish? Today hopefully, is <laughs> hopefully next time you see us, I'm showing you how to eat a stone crab. Oh, uh, stone crab are one of my favorites, guys. But we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna start to fish. I'll see you all in the next one. See ya.